Welcome back to my channel. Today I am discussing why classroom routines are important and how they can make a huge difference in managing your classroom effectively. Before we get started and go ahead, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon for ongoing tips and resources. Classroom routines are essential for creating a structured and predictable learning environment. They help students understand what is expected of them and that reduces anxieties and misunderstandings that it can occur because a teacher may expect students to behave in one way, but a student or the whole class may be, end up behaving in another way. With established routines and then procedures, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a moment, these misunderstandings are minimized, which also minimizes the perception of bad behavior. Okay, so let's delve into the benefits of routines. Firstly, routines make daily activities predictable, which th help students feel more secure. Uh, and the, this predictability and security saves valuable class class time and um, make the lessons more efficient. Because if they know what's coming, know what's expected of them, know what a game looks like or lining up looks like, all of these routines or chores looks like, and when they're going to come in a day, everything becomes more efficient. Additionally, clear routines help in managing student behavior and minimizing disruptions because the students know what to do. Again, it's that perception of bad behavior. Sometimes when we think kids are off task, but instead what's really going on is they're not really sure what doing. They're kind of, you know, fighting through a fog there. Equally important, in my humble opinion, is that these routines enable your class to continue functioning well in your absence. This minimizes the loss of learning time even more. So some examples of classroom routines would be um, something like morning tasks. So in my class, after we finished doing laps around the school, which is our first morning routine, uh, we would come in and they would be expected to put away their coats, take on off any outside gear, put on the inside gear, of course, like footwear, uh, put away their folder that they took home with anything that was sent home the night before, after they had found a new book for taking home that night from their book areas. And then their expectation was to get the chair. They could put their water bowl on their desk, but they had to get out their chair, tuck it in nicely to their desk, and then they were to head over to the carpet. Their job at the carpet was to occupy themselves in whatever way was appropriate or that they wanted to do that fell appropriately within our classroom expectations. So they could just sit and chat with friends or they could read books from the classroom library. But the expectation as part of the routine was that they had to uh, be waiting quietly at carpet while I finished attendance and supporting any other students. Another example is uh, part of every class day that I've ever experienced which is lining up for whether it's uh, recess, going home, going in my school, it was going to music and PE. And uh, when we all went to chapel together, all of those things, that was a routine. It wasn't at the same time every day, all the time, of course, recess and, and lunch recess were, but the other times they were routines during the week and they knew exactly what to do. And of course that had something to do with procedures, which again, we'll talk about in just a second. And then there are end of the day cleaning routines and um, which allowed and ensured that the classroom remained tidy. All of these and more are part of the classroom or some of the classroom routines that kept my classroom running smoothly. For routines and transitions to operate successfully, it is crucial to have clear, concise rules and then model them consistently. Visual aids like charts or posters can be very effective in reminding students of their roles and responsibilities and they help your students to remember what they do when they look at the anchor charts. So when teachers, uh, ex when teaching expected behaviors for routines, I always liked to choose a student to model their behavior, then another student to model how not to behave, and then finally another student to model making good choices once again. So remember procedures are detailed step steps for tasks. For example, one daily routine is to line up for recess, as we've discussed, and the procedure is how to line up for recess. So in my class, um, they didn't just run to the door. Depending on what we were doing at that particular time, if they were seated at their desk, the routine for or the procedure for that was 
when I dismissed them to put their materials in their binder, if we were sitting at the class working on something, at the desk working on something, uh, put the binder into their desk, stand up quietly and slowly, not um, pushing anybody out of the way or anything like that, quietly putting their chair into the desk so nobody else tripped over it as they tried to exit the room, and then walking to their cubby. If they didn't follow that procedure, they got to come back and practice, and that was reinforced because that's, and we discussed, how do we prevent others from getting hurt? Well, if we do these slow processes, then um, nobody's going to trip over us. We're not going to bump into anybody. We're going to practice keeping each other safe. So that was our procedure for lining up for recess. And it's great to practice when they're really excited to go do something because they don't want to practice very often. So they're going to show you they know how to do it really quickly. Another example in my class was the daily routine of class chores. And each chore had a separate procedure. So of course, wiping the board is going to have a separate procedure from taking the recycling or compost out. And um, so I would have taught all of those and, and that's a long kind of drawn out explanation. So I won't go into it, um, but it involved partnership and, and all sorts of things. But then, of course, within that, so that was with, sorry, there was the, the chores, and within that was the specific chore, but within the overall routine was what to do when you had finished your specific chore, because, of course, some people's chore had been doing classroom calendar at the morning, so they didn't have anything to do at the end of the day. So the overall arching routine is within that, the procedure was I finished my chore, then I go check with Mrs. Well, actually, I start putting away all the chairs because we didn't put away our own chair, you put away, you served each other. We were servant hearted. And if all the chairs were put away, then I go and ask Mrs. Busfield what can be done next. And sometimes it can be a lot of work how, figuring out how to keep a number of kids busy. But of course, we never went till everybody had completely finished all their chores. It was time to start assembling back of the carpet into our circle and getting ready to shut down for the day, which of course is also part of the procedure. Um, so there's... Again, there's the routine, which is classroom chores, and then there are the procedures, which can be simple, like, uh, you know, lining up, or more complicated, like classroom chores. So implementing effective classroom routines can really transform your teaching experience and your classroom. The having establishing these routines, teaching them well, and uh, enforcing expectations around them make it a more enjoyable classroom for both you and for your students and gives everybody, helps everybody just relax. One of the things that I love the most about routines is how, um, and some of my own uh, procedures within the day and how I organize my classroom meant that I didn't have to think about much at all. I was organized, I was ready to go, there were the routines in place, so I could actually really focus on the students more so that I was teaching students, not curriculum. Anyways, I hope this helped you understanding more about classroom routines and the difference between routines and procedures and the importance of them both in the classroom. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Before you go, I just want to say thank you for joining me today one more time. I am here to empower you to take charge in the classroom by, and by supporting you with evidence-based classroom management strategies and resources. Classroom ma management is overwhelming at the beginning for most of us, but with the right strategies and resources, you will master the classroom behavior and that paves the way for dynamic instruction. In the description below, you will find the link to download my free classroom management checklist. Inside the checklist, you will find my five pillars of classroom management, and these have been broken down into steps you can take one step at a time. A goal setting page is included to help you get organized and that will help you prioritize the needs for your particular classroom. Download the checklist now and set your goals today. Once again, let me say I appreciate you sharing your time with me today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.